So when we were discussing about doing this presentation on the topic of AML and fraud, and I think the, the earlier presentations that happened this morning, uh, it's, it's clear that there is a big change in the regulatory landscape in India, right? And we have seen such changes in different geographies across the globe where the, the banking regulators and the, the banking industry is geared to make significant investments to make sure that the financial crime programs are robust, uh, the AML reporting is robust, and the uh, the end-to-end end-to-end uh, -end controls that are put in place by the banks they are they are matured. So, I think India is Indian banking market is at a cusp where you are going to see lot, not only a lot of regulatory changes, but also you are going to see a lot of investments in technology and software systems in order to address those regulatory changes. And it gives you an opportunity by being uh, in this, uh, at this milestone to reevaluate how you are going to go about those technology investments in the coming years. And this is a continuous process. So we are not saying that you are going to invest something for next one year or two year and it is going to be that said. It's going to be a continuous in investment on parts of the banking systems and the different financial institutions in your financial crime and compliance management programs. So this topic here, I'm going to spend some time today discussing about how institutions can look at leveraging their investments across anti-money laundering systems and fraud systems. And I think Indian institutions or Indian financial institutions can take away some what are the strategies that they can embark so that it's not such a high cost uh, investment for them, but it still gives them the benefit and the advantage that they need in the space to be compliant and at the same time to prevent fraud losses. So this is a small snapshot of a, a study that was done by an IT group uh, a couple of years back. And it talks about where the, what the industry's view is. It was like polled, there were like 300 different global institutions polled for this study. And in this study, they were talked about, every, uh, the participants were asked about the likelihood of integration between AML and fraud. Right. And you see it that only 7% of the institutions globally consider that they have some degree of significant integration between AML and fraud systems. Whereas majority of them have, uh, a majority of them don't have any integration or they have tried and failed or uh, they are also like you have uh, some of them which have future plans for integration. And I think this is important from the Indian market standpoint because as these regulations are coming in place, you are going to be required to make choices on what kind of technology you are going to use to invest in these, uh, in your programs. And it gives you an opportunity which very few geographies have nowadays to evaluate your technology strategy and decide how you are going to make these investments and how you are going to reap the benefits, not only for AML and KYC, but also for loss prevention from a fraud standpoint. We see several challenges in the industry. These, the AML space, uh, it's significant investments happening across the board, not only in India. Uh, we see that uh, there are, as per the survey also it depicts, there is redundant investments in AML and fraud, right? So you have several banks uh, have multiple systems. Uh, these systems don't talk to each other. Uh, there is very little leverage of technology. But if you ask the practitioners and the industry analysts and even like the stakeholders, they all agree that there are several degrees of commonality between these programs. Uh, one of the other challenges in integration that we see is that there are st different strategic priorities, right? So if you talk to an AML program head and a fraud program head, uh, they have different plans, they have different priorities, and that results in, uh, I would say, like silo investments or completely disparate or distinct investments into the technology landscape. And finally, and more importantly, there is also this whole uh, 
challenge around organization and cultural barriers around, between AML and fraud because they may not be aligned at the senior level. They may not, they may not have a common mandate to work together and that results in, uh, that results in uncommon investments in these uh, systems. So what, what I've done here is I've, uh, based on Oracle's experience in this space globally, uh, we have hashed out five key technology dimensions for, uh, which are common. Uh, there are several other technologies that get implemented for AML and fraud, but five key technology dimensions which impact AML and impact fraud. And they are fairly common in our understanding. They're fairly common and can be leveraged across AML and fraud. So I think the first most important thing is data, right? And data is critical. I think in the earlier session also, uh, during the KYC process, you are required to, you should ask for the right information. Because if you don't have the right information, you cannot uh, adjudicate or you cannot decide whether something is suspicious or not. So you need to have the right data. And sometimes we see that there is less focus on the data and more focus on the operation side of the equation. And that's, that results, that may result in like some short term relief because uh, inspecting your data and making sure that the data is of right quality and right integrity is a, um, it takes some effort, but in the long term, that effort that you invest upfront is going to help you in your AML and fraud programs extensively. So having a common data strategy across AML and fraud is, uh, I, I believe it's uh, not only uh, important, it's almost like a prerequisite in order to combat financial crimes and uh, be able to address the financial crime and compliance management requirements. Uh, the second component, uh, technical component that uh, global institutions deal with and is, has a overlay across AML and fraud is monitoring and detection. And that's, that's where the, you do your transaction monitoring, you detect different behaviors, uh, you detect suspicious activity, you detect fraudulent behaviors. And there is some disparity between AML and fraud. In case of AML, generally global institutions have one system uh, which is mo uh, monitoring their AML transactions or, or doing their AML monitoring. But in case of fraud with so many channels and so many uh, avenues for uh, touching with the customer, you end up having multiple monitoring systems. So you may have a monitoring system for credit card monitoring or you may have a system for your online internet banking channel. And, and that's fine, you don't, I'm not saying that you have to have one single system which does it all. But there, that has to be a conscious decision. You can invest in best of breed technologies for certain channels, but still, you still can leverage those investments uh, where it is applicable. So you see that deposit fraud or identity takeover it can happen on the online channel, but you could also do it in a batch fashion. So if you have an AML monitoring system, maybe that system can be leveraged to detect whether there is any kind of deposit fraud happening or there is any kind of internal fraud or employee fraud happening in the institution. So there are these, uh, what I would say, there are these opportunities that institutions have in order to uh, not only meet their AML regulatory requirements, but also to help the AML system help them prevent losses to the institution. The, the third area of uh, technology is investigation, and uh, you are going to require some way of investigating your events, alerts, cases, what you may call, or your customers. And we see that there is a, this is one area where there is significant focus for integration. So when we talk to banks of all shapes and sizes across the globe, one area where they see there are synergies between AML and fraud is on the investigation. Oops, sorry. One area where we see a uh, lot of discussion investment is, oh, we want to have a common case management system, or we want to have a common area where our users can look at that information. And I think that's where, when in the earlier slide I showed that some some of the institutions reported or polled that they have some kind of integration. Uh, most of that integration is coming from having a 
uh, some way of a common platform to look at those results and to make decisions on those results. And I think that's a, that's a nice place to start. Uh, however, I would still like to re-emphasize that uh, just having a common system doesn't help if your data is not common, right? So you may have your 100 users or 30 users or 40 users on the same system, but if your data is not going to be common, it's not going to be consistent, it's just it's going to give you marginal benefit in the long run. Uh, finally, the regulatory reporting piece, uh, there are uh, there are banking uh, industries and even in India where the fraud group, the KYC group, the AML group, all are reporting to regulators in one way or fashion. And that's, that's another opportunity where you can consolidate your technology investments and having a common regulatory reporting platform. Uh, and then nowadays we talk a lot about analytics uh, in, the, in the global markets where institutions are trying to apply statistical models and behavior analysis and uh, data sampling. And all these technologies and all these uh, solutions, analytical solutions, deliver benefit for AML and fraud. And uh, again, coming back to the data, um, uh, coming back to the point of having common data, if your data is common, you could leverage uh, having statistical quantitative analysts look at your AML data and fraud data and fine tune your systems. And obviously it's uh, there, I, I don't need to emphasize that there are benefits in having a common technology strategy for AML and fraud. However, it's always a balancing act, right? And the, the three pillars of those um, that act, one is cost, right? You want to make sure that your costs are, um, are managed properly across your AML and fraud programs. Another is compliance with your regulatory requirements. And finally is preventing losses. And it's the, that delicate balance that you need to achieve in order to, uh, in order to make, make sure that you have a single technology platform, and yet you are not compromising your AML uh, mandates or you are not compromising your SLAs for loss prevention. So this, this slide, it's it just uh, based on all the different technology dimensions that uh, I just discussed. Uh, this slide talks about which of these dimensions has the highest impact when it comes to integration. So no, no institution would be able to score integration on all levels. You are always going to have certain fraud specific programs which will be outside the AML purview, or you will have certain AML, uh, whether it's KYC, whether it's transaction screening, that will be outside the purview of the fraud system. But if you want to start today, and you have an opportunity, which I believe the Indian market has an opportunity with this heightened regulation. Uh, if you are going to make those investments today, which of these investments is going to have highest impact in your, from a cost standpoint, from ability to meet your regulatory requirements for AML, from ability to meet your SLAs for fraud losses. And, and that, this slide talks about, so data is the topmost priority, right? And it has, if you have common data, and you, have, you are looking at common data and maybe you have different systems, it still gives you a much better picture of where your AML and fraud programs is. The sharing of information is consistent, so you may be manually sharing the information. You may be emailing the customer information or account information or transaction information. But if, if you are looking at the same pieces, maybe in different systems, it still has a huge benefit to, um, to the operations. The second area, and as I said, the industry also recognizes it, is investigation. So if you have a common case management system, a common platform where you are, analysis, uh, you are analyzing and reporting off of, that's an area where you could really significantly reduce your cost. Right? It also helps you with investigation, but we see, we see that uh, if you have an AML program in place, if you have an AML system in place, you have some fraud systems in place, uh, institutions are always wary about replacing their AML systems because if they replace the AML system, they need to retune the system, they need to look at the system, uh, they need to recalibrate their system. But then case management gives them that opportunity where they can consolidate all the results from your AML and fraud systems and get some kind of efficiency going, some kind of productivity gains going, and reduce their cost footprint. 
Uh, detection and monitoring is again a big, big area where uh, institutions can look uh, to integrate. I think it, it, it helps you with false positives management. I think some of the institutions which have a matured AML program, their second biggest problem, their topmost problem in the AML side is false positives. Right? And how you can counter those false positives? Is there a way where you can get some data from the fraud side? Right? Do you have insight into what's happening on the fraud side? It's also a regulatory issue because what happens is that it's a common, um, common dialogue we have with our clients and prospects where uh, they mark an alert or an event as false positive, but they find something in the fraud system to be fraudulent. And then the regulators ask them that, okay, why did you mark this as false positive in your AML system, whereas your fraud system is going to be, is, is reporting on it. So that kind of alignment will save you a lot of headache, and it also gives you cost benefits. So it's a win-win situation from your regulatory and fraud prevention requirement standpoint, plus it helps you with your cost footprint of the uh, program. And obviously, if your data is common, your analytics and regulatory reporting rec uh, functions will be more accurate. I think uh, just earlier, Mr. Tiwari was talking about the accuracy of reporting, right? It ties to data. Right. Um, your KYC, uh, uh, someone in the audience asked about beneficial ownership. It's going to be opening like a Pandora's box, and absolutely, but as, it's as good as your data, right? If you don't have the data, if you are not collecting that KYC data up front, we won't, the system won't be able to detect what is, uh, whether something is going wrong or not. Similarly, on the fraud side, if you are trying to detect some kind of a, a complex ring, fraud ring, and you want to determine relationships with your employees and customers, the data becomes critical. And we believe that uh, the, uh, the importance of data, and when we go and implement these solutions or we advise our clients, the importance of data has always dawned upon these institutions at a latter stage. So this is an opportunity for the Indian market where they could recognize that upfront and start taking that under consideration rather than wait for five, six years and then say, oh, I invested so many millions of dollars in the system. However, what I'm getting output from my system is still uh, subpar and I need to reevaluate my investment strategy. And this, this slide just gives what we are seeing in the industry, right? So uh, what, what we have done here is that if you look at the tab tabular structure, you have uh, the deployment types and you have single system deployment. And single system basically means that you have one single system doing everything for AML and fraud. And that's a rarity. Maybe smaller uh, institutions uh, who have lesser transaction volumes should aim for that kind of goal. And I think it's an achievable goal for smaller institutions. Uh, then you have hybrid integration, and that's where uh, your return of investment is high. It's, it's to the degree of how hybrid, how, how much common you, commonality you have between AML and fraud. Uh, but it has a medium global footprint. So a lot of institutions have some kind of reuse, but it depends on how much reuse they are doing because your ROI is directly proportional to the degree of reuse you have in, across your systems. Um, the third one is dis different systems, common technology, right? So very rarely, and I think it doesn't even make sense to have, if you have the same uh, technology, why would you invest in different systems? The exceptions are tier one global institutions, which may do it for, because they are doing like hundreds of millions of transactions and maintaining autonomy between systems, it's, it's by design. Uh, not, not a, it's not considered as a failure, but by design, they maintain different systems. And then finally is the different systems, different technology, and that's where the industry is, right? So even in some of the matured markets, as far as AML and KYC and fraud is concerned, that's what you see. You see disparate systems, silo systems, disconnected systems, and they are trying to, they are trying to consolidate that, and that's why uh, if you look at those uh, curved arrows here, maximum investment in the market is happening from going from that disparate silo status into a more consolidated status, into a more hybrid integration approach. And the end goal or the end vision for institutions is to go into that single system approach. 
obviously for certain institutions that single system approach will never come and as I said they because of the size because of the complexity because of the different channels that they serve that single vision or single system vision is impractical but trying to aspire to be closer to that single system vision what will make your program more um, I would say not only more compliant with your local and global regulations, but it also helps your cost footprint uh, down. 